Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Peden's Journal. Uh, today is Tuesday, November 25th. Uh, Thanksgiving is a couple of days away, and everyone's looking forward to it. I have my last day of official classes today. I have a meeting I have to go to tomorrow, but it's uh, nothing formal. So I don't have any class for the rest of the week, which is nice. So hopefully I'll be able to take advantage of my time. Uh, interesting things happened to me in the last couple days and today I found out that for the first time one of my videos was blocked. Uh, I did a Gophers After Dark thing a couple years ago and spoofed uh, Mr. Roboto from Styx and apparently Styx doesn't want their material to be out on the internet so my video was removed. It didn't have a lot of viewers anyways. It, just an interesting experience so you could call this video as somewhat of a replacement. I'm not going to fight it up. Again, not a lot of viewers. Second, I uh, noticed that YouTube just went widescreen. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And the reason why I'm looking forward to taking advantage of this widescreen switch is that uh, I've got high school girls basketball coming up. In fact, I start my first game on Saturday, so I'm going to test out one of our cameras to make sure it shoots in. 16 by 9 format and if it does then uh, you're going to be in for a treat as we will make the official switch to widescreen format which would help us a lot in terms of space and getting shots and things like that it'd be a little easier because you have about 25 to 30 percent more space to work with on screen than the old 4 by 3 definitions that we've worked with uh, for the last few years so we'll see what happens there uh, last Saturday, I watched YouTube Live. I had heard about it. Wasn't sure if I was going to watch it, but I went, came back from a girlfriend women's basketball game earlier that day, had nothing else to do. And so I thought, hey, I'll watch this live program. And uh, it was an interesting experience, and I've got a feeling that we're going to be seeing more live streams from them in the future. Uh, uh, the quality certainly is not up there. It's about the same as other streaming video, but... Uh, with time and technology will improve and we will get to see high quality streams that rival those of broadcast networks. As far as the format, it was just a two hour variety party sort of celebrating the advantages YouTube offers to people. Chad Vader was there, uh, this, the Woollet Bland guy, Mythbusters. It was a cool program though, something to watch on a Saturday night and the best part was there was not a single commercial it was two hours and it went from one act to the next and that to me was the greatest part about that program is uh, you couldn't go up and grab a snack or anything like that you had to sit there if you wanted to watch the whole thing but if you missed anything as YouTube, YouTube couldn't call themselves YouTube if they didn't upload their videos to YouTube so you can watch highlights if you missed anything I've been thinking about a lot of things lately with my experience with the autism spectrum disorder. I know I produced four documentaries. I had plans on making a fifth over winter break. I just need to collect an interview. But uh, I've been thinking about this idea of progress with the autism community. Now I'm not saying the progress made towards understanding and adapting, integrating autistics into the rest of the community isn't rewarding and that it shouldn't be exercised, but I remember something, I remember something that someone told me, a psychologist told me from the Autism Society of Minnesota when I was covering a fundraiser hosted by them in Details Salon and Spa. It was used for my third and fourth documentaries and she told me that if everyone had autism there would not be a problem and I didn't think much of it at that point I'm like yeah you're right if we all had autism then it wouldn't be an issue but over the last few months as I worked on those documentaries and then started getting hooked on the Big Bang Theory in which one of the characters while never exp never explicitly stated on the air does show behaviors that are symbolic or match a classical case of a person with autism spectrum disorder 
I started to get this idea of what does it mean what does it mean for me that I'm making progress what does that mean does it mean I'm making progress by the standards that quote-unquote neurotypical people set that everyone is supposed to follow because oh, everyone's frightened of change Ooh. and uh, speaking of change we're gonna have a new president and uh, I'm looking forward to that anyway I I kind of wonder if this idea of progress is just based on what the norm has been for so long and because there are so few autistic people and because there's a, such a lack of understanding that the best way to address the problem is to get every autistic to act like everybody else because if they act like everyone else then we don't have a problem right because everyone else doesn't act silly or logical or unsympathetic or unemotional etc 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 now conversely when I present a debate I always like to present a point from the opposing side so that it gives you a better idea on how, on how to analyze this argument there are some psycho I talked to a psychologist who told me that autism can help others or neurotypicals or anyone else uh, learn about typical development because we don't develop like they do and it, so, studies have shown we have dormant genes in our body or yeah dormant genes as opposed to other disabilities where genes are broken in the person's DNA so they're just lying dormant waiting for us to wake up or waiting for them to wake up and I really don't know what kind of progress I'm making I know by quote-unquote neurotypical standards and I'm not trying to separate or divide people I know I certainly can act like everyone else but at the same time I think it's practically impossible because uh, my decision-making my process of thought is vastly different than what most other people go through particularly when it comes to decision-making and analysis if I'm not aware or if I'm not certain how a person or or a group of people will respond to a behavior and it's I don't worry I have I know what behaviors are good and bad and things like that but I start over analyzing the situation thinking about what could go wrong what could go right depending on what I do or say for someone else they probably won't would think about it for two seconds and then go on not worry about it for someone like me the decision is 10,000 times harder and I it's 10,000 times harder and I just don't know what's going to happen because I've gone dealt with a lot of crap because I have a disability that cannot be physically detected so when you've gone through a lot of crap you're a little skeptical on how people will respond and if they're being honest and straightforward to you and thankfully I know some people who are otherwise I probably would go insane so I kind of wonder if with that if it's I really think it's impossible to make progress based on what everyone else should act like now again therapies intervention should be addressed because we don't want to leave them for dead for lack of a better analogy but I think the, my goal of this argument is that we need to recognize these differences and not worry about what prog what what people are supposed to act like what people should look like what people how people should respond we, we need to acknowledge differences and when someone does something that normal people may not understand then instead of oh what is this guy doing this guy's some crazy weirdo they need to look at that and like oh maybe he just thinks a little bit differently and I think that will be that is the true meaning of progress when not only people can adapt to certain situations but people also acknowledge the differences that they may not have had to encounter in their own lives well that ends my impromptu argument see you next time